Okay, what's up everybody? Today we're talking screw caps. The dreaded screw cap. So many people love to hate it. I'm gonna answer a few questions for you, clear up a few things. Without further ado, intro. Screw caps. Let's talk screw caps. So many people hate screw caps, myself in a way included, but I'll get to that a little bit later. First of all, let's talk about what it means if your wine has a screw cap on it. Well, nothing. It doesn't really mean anything. There's a whole lot of other stuff you can talk about with the wine, but the bottle it's in and the cap on top don't mean much most of the time. There are regions where you can typically find screw caps more often and there are regions where you barely ever see screw caps being used. So I mean you might be able to determine a little bit of something by seeing that screw cap on it, guess which region it comes from perhaps. But aside from that it doesn't really mean much. So let's talk about why a place would use a screw cap first. Number one, it doesn't really have anything to do with the cost for the most part. Yeah, okay, maybe it's a little bit cheaper than some of those really expensive corks that are out there that some of those really premium wines put on their bottles. It's more convenience, I guess, and also it gets rid of the risk of your wine being tainted. So if anybody's ever got a bottle of wine and it smelt like a wet basement, some people continue to drink it because they don't know what that means and I feel horrible for you. But at the end of the day, that's something that comes from the cork in the bottle. It's called cork taint, or your wine being corked, or TCA, TCB. At the end of the day, it's a bacteria that comes from the cork, taints the wine, makes it smell like a wet basement, and it never gets any better. When you open that bottle of wine, it'll get worse and worse and worse. It's not pleasant, it's not fun to drink. You can drink it, I don't recommend it, it's disgusting, and that's just the way it is. That's actually also why you uh, smell your wine at a restaurant before you actually drink it and commit to that bottle. It's not so you see if you like the wine, it's more or less to see if it's faulted. One of the most common faults is exactly that cork taint or your wine being corked, and that comes from the cork. Therefore, if you put a screw cap on that bottle, it gets rid of that chance. I believe it's somewhere about one in 25 bottles that have cork are corked. So. That's one reason why you would do it. Another reason is in regions like New Zealand and Australia, it is difficult to get corks there, therefore the price goes way up. I guess I said it didn't have anything to do with the price, but obviously everything has something to do with price for the most part. Um, so yeah, that's another thing too. It's tough to get those corks over there and they decide to start using screw caps and then they realize that it's actually a pretty good closure. So they continue to go on with that. And nowadays you can actually find super premium wines with screw caps like this beauty right here from Lang Miel. It is their Freedom 1843 Shiraz. It is their top of the line. It's about 130, 150 bucks depending on where you are. And it absolutely has or I guess this bottle had, a screw cap. So yeah, it's not really something that determines the quality of the wine anymore. I guess when they first came out, you really only saw it in the cheaper wines because it was sort of a, there was a negative connotation or a stigma with screw caps, so you didn't want to put it on an expensive bottle or people would shy away from it. But nowadays, it just doesn't really matter. Obviously, there's more to do with what goes on in that bottle than the actual closure. So if you have a problem with screw caps, I'm sorry, you're going to delete some really beautiful wines from places like Australia and New Zealand and other New World regions that are using screw cap from the wines you're going to be able to taste because you're shunning them based on what they have on top of them. Now, corks, I guess, have some benefits. It's, it's nicer to open a bottle with a cork. That's the reason I don't like screw caps because I can't stand this sound. Oh, awful. And then this thing. But the wine's beautiful. This is a Central Otago Pinot Noir. Central Otago is very famous for making high quality Pinot Noir. It is the first region in the world producing wine to see sunlight every day, so that's kind of neat. And it makes beautiful wine at the end of the day. That's all we really care about. So who cares what kind of cap there is? I can't stand that sound. I mean, it sounds like I'm opening up a bottle of Diet Coke. So that kind of sucks, but aside from that, there's really nothing wrong with that closure. 
And that's just the way that it is. If I open it up and this came out and then I smelled the wine and it smelled like a wet basement, that would be even more disappointing than that little sound. So I guess at the end of the day, I can't hate on screw caps. It's not as romantic and I'm kind of romantic. So I guess that's the reason that I hate them, but I don't really hate them. I just prefer corks as long as the wine isn't corked. Now, as far as ageability goes, can you age a wine with a screw cap? It's a question I hear a lot. Um, yeah, I don't see why not. Essentially what a closure is meant for, whether it's cork or screw cap, is to stop oxygen from contacting the wine. That's what ages it, that's what develops it, that's what makes it go bad, that's what allows it to turn into vinegar and all that sort of stuff. So basically what you're trying to do when you close that bottle of wine is avoid that oxygen contact. Now corks, being that they are porous, it's pretty easy to see even just by looking at this, uh, they allow a small amount of oxygen through even though they have that foil over top and all that good stuff. So over time there is a can you age a wine with a screw cap? It's a question I hear a lot. Uh, yeah, I don't see why not. Essentially what a closure is meant for, whether it's cork or screw cap, is to stop oxygen from contacting the wine. That's what ages it, that's what develops it, that's what makes it go bad, that's what allows it to turn into vinegar and all that sort of stuff. So. Basically, what you're trying to do when you close that bottle of wine is avoid that oxygen contact. Now corks, being that they are porous, it's pretty easy to see even just by looking at this, uh, they allow a small amount of oxygen through even though they have that foil over top and all that good stuff. So over time, there is a minute amount of oxygen contacting that wine, allowing it to develop if it's an age-worthy wine into something beautiful. Um, if it's not age-worthy, then it's not gonna develop into anything, any, anything better than it was to begin with at least. And corks have been doing that for ages and ages and ages. So we know what they can do. They've stood the test of time, so to speak, and so on. And that's just the way that it is. Now, screw caps are kind of new on the scene. We haven't seen super high quality wines that are age worthy under screw cap for a very long period of time. So I guess essentially we don't know how they're aging. You can test it over years and see how things are developing next to a bottle that has a cork and see how they're developing and all that sort of stuff, but it's not that cut and dry. There's a lot more that goes into it. Now, I guess in a few years, some of these wines like uh, this Freedom 1843 from Lang Miel, which by all means is age-worthy, we can open that up, see what it's like, see how it's aging and determine if a screw cap is a good thing to age your wine with. Um, but yeah, I don't see why not. It still allows a tiny amount of oxygen. You can't completely 100% seal off oxygen. It will find its way in. So it is going to develop. Um, yeah, corks versus screw cap. It was more of like a rant. I've realized that I very rarely answer any questions on here. I more or less just rant about my opinion. And uh, I mean, it's a pretty educated opinion, I guess. So it's probably a decent one to listen to if you're trying to learn more about wine, but um, Maybe you don't like it, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm talking about right now. I'm going on and on and on, so I'm gonna stop. That's my take on cork versus screw cap. I prefer corks because I like opening a bottle of wine like this. But I have nothing against screw caps at all whatsoever. I do not shun them when somebody brings a bottle of wine to my house with a screw cap, I don't get upset. I look at the bottle first and determine how happy I'm going to be once I see what it is. And yeah, you shouldn't shun them either. Screw caps are closing beautiful wines all over the world, except mostly in Europe. You don't see very much screw cap in Europe. Uh, that's very high quality, so that's just the way that it is. Uh, maybe we will in the future. I don't know, but I certainly won't push it away just because it has a screw cap and you shouldn't either. I'm going way over time here. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I didn't bring a glass, but I'm going to now enjoy this beautiful Pinot Noir that has screw cap on it without any discrimination at all. And that's that. Cheers, everybody.